Howdy, it's Kyle. In light of current events, I thought I would do a video on Ukraine. This video is not going to be about the war. I'm not going to be going into anything geopolitical, so nothing about NATO or the EU, nothing about history like the Bolshevik Revolution kind of stuff. Just an overview of the country because for many of us, this is the first time we're really hearing about Ukraine in detail and it's horrible negative type news with war. So in this video, I want to talk about what Ukraine was like up until at least a week ago and what we hope it'll be back to very shortly. First off, for clarification, it is not the Ukraine, it is simply Ukraine. It sits in Eastern Europe in terms of land area as the 45th largest country in the world, the second largest in Europe. As of the time of me recording this video, the population is 41 million, which makes it the 36th most populous nation on Earth. However, those numbers do not include the disputed Crimean Peninsula. This is an official Australian government map showing the trouble areas in the country before the war. The areas in the eastern part of the country are referred to as the Donbass, and in the southern part of the country in red is the Crimean Peninsula. There is a glaring error on this map. If you look to the west, it says Republic of Slovenia. The country Ukraine borders there is actually Slovakia, not Slovenia. It's disturbing that an official Australian government map would make that kind of a mistake, but that's not what this video is about. The government of Ukraine is set up similar to what other Western countries have. There is an elected president, a parliament which is similar to the U.S. Congress, and a Supreme Court, and all three are independent of each other. And although there's certainly going to be corruption in the government, there's corruption in every government in the world, regardless of wealth status. It's also worth noting that there are 1.4 million Canadians of Ukrainian descent. That's roughly 3% of the overall Canadian population, and there are more Ukrainians in Canada than there are in any country on Earth other than Ukraine itself and Russia. Most Ukrainians are bilingual, speaking Ukrainian and Russian, and many also speak English. Ukrainian and Russian are both Slavic languages that use the Cyrillic alphabet. And from what I understand, the two languages are fairly similar, so if somebody is speaking Ukrainian to somebody speaking Russian, they would overall get the gist of what each other one was saying, kind of like Spanish and Portuguese. The capital and largest city is Kyiv, with a population of about 3 million. The city used to be referred to as Kiev, K-I-E-V, but that is the Russian spelling and Russian pronunciation of the name. The second largest city in the country is Kharkiv, with a population of about 1.4 million. The third largest city is Odessa, with a population of just over 1 million. This is in the warmer part of the country in the south, sits along the Black Sea coast. And in good times, this is a popular spot to go to the beach during the summer. The next largest city is Dnipro, population is just under 1 million. Following that, the next largest city is Donetsk, and this is in the eastern part of the country that's largely contested and has seen a lot of the fighting. And it's difficult to show images of these cities knowing that they no longer look like this, but this is how they looked as of a week prior to me recording this. The largest city in the western part of the country is Lviv, there are just over 700,000 there. There are many other medium-sized cities in the country, but overall the country is fairly urbanized. One thing that's important to note is that Ukraine is a fairly poor country. Most of the images and footage we've seen have been of Ukrainian cities, which are of a decent level of development, but the rural areas are quite poor. The GDP of the country is about $181 billion, which ranks it 55th in the world in terms of nominal GDP and 40th in terms of purchasing power GDP. And that's about the same GDP as a nation of Hungary, which only has 9.7 million people. The per capita nominal GDP is $4,400 US, and the per capita purchasing power GDP is $14,000 US. It's the poorest country in Europe and is poorer than both Kosovo and Moldova. However, there has been a steady upward trend in GDP, GDP per capita, GDP growth, and a lowering unemployment rate since 2015. 2014 was the big crisis in the Crimean Peninsula, but since then there's been steady growth in terms of the economy. The largest company in the country is called Metinvest. They do coal and iron ore mining, but they're also involved in much metallurgy. So there's steel plating, metal track and tubular products, and there's even a fledgling spacecraft industry. They're already making planes there. And overall, it's just a major producer of fossil fuels and metallurgy. Ukraine is also becoming a major player in information technology. A couple surprising stats are that Ukraine has the most C++ and Unity 3D computer programmers in the world, and it's also second in the world to the number of computer programmers in JavaScript and Magento. It's a major producer of wheat and other grains, and is a major grains exporter on a global scale, which gives it the nickname the breadbasket of Europe. And it's also a major producer of sunflower oil for the globe, a lot of wheat, 
a lot of sunflowers that sounds a lot like the US state of Kansas. And the physical geography of Ukraine is fairly similar to Kansas and the Great Plains state just north of it. And so that's a good segue into the physical geography of Ukraine. Most of the country is rolling hills and plains. In the far southwestern portion of the country along the Romanian border are the Carpathian Mountains. And the highest peak in the country is called Haverla. I'm not sure if that's how it's pronounced. It stands at 2,061 meters or 6,762 feet. The climate of Ukraine is similar to the U.S. state of Minnesota. With the exception of the coastal parts of the country, winters are long, windy, and cold, although the sea does moderate the temperatures for the southern cities of the country. But unfortunately, this type of topography leaves really nowhere to hide. A country like Vietnam has dense, mountainous, tropical rainforest. Afghanistan has very difficult terrain and some almost impenetrable mountain ranges. But Ukraine doesn't have that type of terrain to really hide. There's really nowhere to hide there. In search of a silver lining, this is going down in March, and it's going to start getting warmer pretty soon. If Russia were to completely cut off the power to Ukraine, stop the flow of natural gas and no more heat, this would cause a major issue during the winter. Not that losing power and natural gas in the summer is any better, but I'm just looking for a silver lining here. So that's the overview of Ukraine that I wanted to talk about in this video. And I hope you were able to learn something about the country so that when we see these horrible images and footage on TV of things happening, that we have a little more context as to what the country was like before all this went down. And I have nothing but love and positive thoughts to say to Ukraine and to the tens of millions of Russians that want absolutely nothing to do with this war. So, I mean, that's all I have to say. So peace and thanks for watching.